Previously on Down the Bits. My number one game. Soul Star. One. Five. Number five. Here comes the best bit. Five. Oh my God, the music. One five special. It's made by this man called Nathan McCree. Nathan McCree, absolutely amazing. And now. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm, warm welcome to Down the Bits. Very first one five special and uh, live on Skype, straight from Bruno in the Czech Republic. I have no one less than Nathan McCree. Nathan, how are you? Hello, I'm very well indeed. Thank you very much, Martin. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about where you uh, come from and uh, how you uh, came to uh, dabble in music? Uh, okay, so, uh, well, I, I was born and bred, well, certainly bred anyway, in Lincolnshire for the large part of my life. Um, my dad was very musical, so my brother and sister and I, you know, all sort of got into music from an early age. And, and I thought about, you know, leaving the school at 17 and, and you know, being in a band and, and doing all that thing. Um, but my dad was dead against it and he said, no, you've got to go to university, you've got to get a degree, you know. <laughs> uh, I wasn't too happy about, uh, happy about that at the time, but I did, I did do that. I got my A-levels and I did a degree in computer science and programming. Right. And uh, when I left university, my first job was actually with Core Design as a programmer. And the, the first project uh, Jeremy had me do, Jeremy Heath Smith, he was the core design boss, was uh, to code a music yeah. sequencer for the yeah. Mega Drive. And so I wrote the sequencer, um, coded all that up in about four months, and I had a little bit of time spare, so I wrote some music on it to demonstrate, you know, what it could do. And uh, when he heard it, he said, oh, you know, that's great. You know, do you want to do you want to do the rest of the music for, for one of the games we're working on? <laughs> so I said, of course, you know, and, and that was it. You know, I, I just kept doing game, uh, game music and sound effects after that. I never did any programming uh, again. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your first time with Core? What was it like coming in there? <clears throat> well, I, I was sort of a bit starstruck, I have to say, because I was, you know, sat in a room with a load of other guys and, you know, they were working on and had worked on games which I had played. And I was like, oh, these guys made Jaguar XJ220. I'm like, I used to love that game, you know, start your engines, you know, and I was saying all these quotes. And here were the guys that made it and the guys that did the voiceover and stuff. And it was just like, I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I, I was starstruck. The guys there were really creative um, and, you know, not just the artists and and um, the animators and stuff, but the programmers as well. Um, I, I was really surprised about how many of them, uh, you know, played music instruments themselves and, um, and, and were creative in all sorts of different areas. Um, you know, there were programmers who were brilliant artists as well and animators as well, and they were programming all this stuff like crazy. And coming up with new ways of, you know, making the hardware do, you know, things which we didn't think it could do. Um, really talented guys, you know, mucking about with assembly code and stuff, you know, poking yeah. those machines and, and, and just making them whiz as fast as they could. You know, it was really impressive. Uh, much more talented programmers than, than I was or ever, ever would have been. And so, Soulstar. <laughs> yeah. Soulstar, can uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, relationship with Soulstar? Yeah, well, I remember um, at the time I was working. <clears throat> it was at Core, and uh, there wasn't a room. Um, there wasn't any spare rooms for me to have a studio, and and I was really, you know, pushing hard to, you know, secure my job as a full time musician there. <clears throat> and shortly before Soulstar, I, I said to Jeremy, look, I've got a load of kit, you know, I've got my own keyboards and stuff like that, you know, I can bring it in, I just need someone to set it up. And he said, well, we haven't got any space. And I said, what about the cellar? He said, you can't go down there. I said, well, no, I can, you know. He said, you can't even stand up down there. So it doesn't matter. I'll be sitting down anyway. Um, so he said, well, OK, you know, if you're happy. <laughs> so... I moved the table and chair down there and crammed all my gear. In. And literally, the ceiling, you know, when you were sat down, the ceiling was here. <laughs> I got it all in there, you know, and um, and started 
writing like crazy. Um, and I remember one day, I think it was Guy Miller was the game designer. He came down the stairs, sort of crept down, you know, came in to see me. And he said, Nathan, we need some music for, you know, for Soulstar. And I'm like, OK, you know, what, what, what kind of thing do you want? And he said, well, we want, we want basically John Williams Star Wars music. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, I've only just kind of started writing orchestral music. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, can I pull this off? Can I actually do John Williams Star Wars music on a load of keyboards? And I'm thinking this is a real tall challenge, you know. But I said to him, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'll sort that out, you know. How long have we got? And he's like, well, you know, we've got about two weeks. I'm like, oh, God, you know. <laughs> 12 or 15 tunes, I think, something like that. Anyway, so he left, and, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, what, what have I just agreed to, you know? Um, <laughs> so I started listening to some... Obviously, I didn't want to you know copy star wars you know that that wasn't the idea but it just needed to be something epic and you know space battle kind of genre mm. so i started listening to a few other films of similar standing aliens i remember listening to quite a lot um and a few other bits and pieces and just tried to kind of get an idea for uh the orchestral textures um you know how they carried their melodies and what sort of instruments and stuff like this. Um, and then, and then you know, just off I went. Images in my brain and, and I just started writing battle music. Space battle music. Space battle music. Yeah. But I, I have to say, you know, I, I, was, I was pretty chuffed with Soulstar um, in the end. You know, I, I do admit that some of the sounds are a little bit synthesizer-y um, but you know that was just a kit I had at the time I couldn't improve on that uh, anymore um, but generally speaking I was pretty pleased with the tunes and the progressions and, and, and the orchestrations and how it all works and uh, so much so in fact I said to Jeremy you know look we should we should see if we can start you know winning some awards or something with 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 music because you know I, I felt like i was doing a good job and, and martin uh, iveson he was also doing a brilliant job there um so i sort of encouraged jeremy to start and enter us into uh, music awards and stuff for, for games and he did with soulstar and we we got a nomination award for Best Music of the Year 1994, Best Computer Games Music 1994. Oh, that's amazing. And that was for Soulstar. We didn't win it, but do you know, do you know the game that won it? Tell me. Uh, in actual fact, I forget the name of the game, which is a bit annoying, <laughs> but they used John Williams Star Wars music. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Actual, star, actual John Yeah, Williams it was music, music from the film. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a Star Wars, yeah, Lucasfilm licensed game. Um, Star Wars license game and yeah they used the music straight from the film and I thought well you know if we came second to that that's pretty good I'm happy that's not that. so bad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not so bad at all considering how the brief was John Williams uh, space battle music <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that uh, was pretty well done yeah so you know after that I, I, I felt confident about what I was doing and I thought you know if I can do that then I should be able to do anything. So, you know, after that, I was I was just fed orchestral project after orchestral project. You know, they just kept coming in. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of years later, uh, Toby Gard came into my room and, and, and started talking to me about Tomb Raider. None of us had any idea um, that it was going to be as successful as it was. Do you ever miss it, working uh, back in the 90s with Core and the Mega CD and that? Uh, you know, yeah, there's there's lots of stuff I do miss about that. Um, mostly the the guys that I worked with, and, and I'm still friends with a lot of them. Um, you know, we we became quite a close knit family, um, and there's loads and loads of you know in jokes and personal jokes between the lot of us. So, yeah, you know, I miss that lot. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I, the, the sort of innovation that we were doing at the time was quite exciting. Um, 
you know, probably because, you know, nothing was planned, you know. So, you know, it was it was just chaos, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I remember people sleeping under their desks and in cupboards. I found this guy in a cupboard one day. <laughs> I opened up to get some, you know, stationery out and there was this guy in there. <laughs> And he, and he sort of climbed out of the cupboard and sort of looked around all dazed and confused. I'm like, what are you doing? He said, oh, I was just sleeping. He said, Jeremy's not around, is he? I said, no, you're all right. Oh, that's crazy. People used to go to the toilet and lock themselves in so they could go to sleep. <laughs> Stuff like that. It was just madness, man. It was crazy, oh. crazy time. Uh, so, yeah, I sort of miss all of that. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I would really like to record Soulstar with a live orchestra one day, and that's something which I will try and do as soon as um, I can, you know, manage that project. Um, there are things that I need to sort out um, red tape-wise with that, um, but it's something that I do want to do most definitely. So if there's any Soulstar fans out there, you know, keep your ear to the ground and hopefully I can get that project underway in, in the next few years. That would be amazing. If that happens, I promise you, I will be there and I will make a documentary about it. Great. I look forward to that. <laughs> Nathan McCree, it's been an absolute honor talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, taking uh, this time to talk with us. You're very welcome, Martin. Good to meet you.